Welcome back. Okay, so now that we have our base rigid body class in place, let's go and create the uh, drone controller now. And we'll start to see how all this stuff is, you know, hooked together. All right, so let's get going. Alrighty, well, let's go and get the drone controller. So uh, what I would need to do is I need to remove the uh, rigid body and the base rigid body. So just to show you, you know, how that required component, you know, works and protects our, uh, our um, controllers. Let's try to remove the rigid body. So I'm going to go and say remove component. What it's going to do, it's going to tell me you can't remove the component because this base rigid body uh, has said that it requires that rigid body. All right. So that just really helps you make sure that all the components that you need are attached to your game object. Okay. So uh, the way to get rid of all this is we need to delete the base rigid body first. So we're going to go and say uh, remove component, and then we can remove the rigid body because there's no dependencies now. Okay, so let's remove that. All right, so let's go over into the scripts folder here and go and say create new C sharp script, and we're going to call this IP drone uh, controller. Yeah. All right, there we go. And I'm going to go and change the icon in the sky. So let's get the indie pixel icon and click off of it to assign it. There we go. So now we're all official. Let's go and uh, double click it before we assign it to our drone model or game object and let's take care of some code first so we're going to say namespace is indie pixel all right again just to protect the code keep it all compartmentalized and what we want to do in here for our required components we want to make sure that we in fact do have uh, a, a drone input script so i'm going to say require components and we're going to say type of all right so we're going to say type of there there we go so type of and we're gonna say ip drone uh, inputs i just want to make sure that that particular script is in place and remember the drone inputs also make sure that we have a player input so we're kind of creating this cascading you know set of dependencies all right so that really just helps you um, set up a new drone really quickly even if you know you have someone who's setting up the drones who hasn't done all the code they they won't uh, miss any of the components or anything like that. All right, so now we come down to the class. And what we're doing is we're currently inheriting from Monty Behavior, is that base class in Unity, right? Uh, that gives us access to um, you know, all the functions that we use over and over, like start and update, right? Well, the base rigid body inherits from Monty Behavior. So, and we, we want to include all of this code that we just wrote. All right, and I want to write this inside the drone controller. All right, that would be redundant. So let's go and just inherit from our uh, base rigid body. So now we get all of Monty behavior and we get all of our custom code, right? And then we also have access to this virtual function right here that we can override. So pretty cool way to go about setting all this stuff up. They call it object oriented programming. Okay, so that's kind of your first step into that. So we're just inheriting from another class so we get all that functionality. All right, so let's go and create a new region. And these are going to be my variables. So again, you can always set up your templates if you want. And in this case, we are just going to type them again because it doesn't take that long, honestly. All right, we don't need update because remember, now that we're inheriting from the base rich body class, we already have a fixed date update running. What we want to do is just write our own implementation of handle physics. Okay, so I'm going to come into drone controller and we'll do our um, region. We'll say custom methods down here and the region. And what we'll do is we're going to say protected override. And then if you hit space, the IntelliSense will tell you that, well, because we're, you know, inheriting from base rigid body, you have one option here and that's that handle physics. So you can just double click that. And there we go. So now we're overriding it and we're calling the base. Base.handle physics it means it's going to call whatever code we might have written in the base implementation. In this case, there's nothing. So we don't need to actually call the base. There are times when you would have to do that, though. All right. So uh, what, we, what do we want to do here? So in our handle physics, uh, we want to go and call a couple of things. So we're going to you know, be controlling some... Um, engines and we're also going to be controlling the actual um, controls for this like pitch and roll and and yaw so we need two functions here we're going to say handle um, engines 
like so. And we're going to do handle controls. And then we need to actually write those implementations. So we're going to do uh, void. And actually, let's make these protected virtual as well. We might want to make other types of drones. All right. So to do that, we're going to do a virtual. This allows us, again, to override whatever we write um, in here inside of this particular function in another implementation of a drone controller. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. We'll call this handle engines. There we go. And then we'll do another protected uh, virtual void handle controls like so. Awesome. All righty. Now remember also just to reiterate, you know, how cool inheritance is. <laughs> um, this handle physics won't run if there is no rigid body. So if we go to the, you know, base implementation here in the base rigid body class, nothing will run if a rigid, bo a rigid body is not detected. All right. So uh, it, this is, it's really nicely, you know, organized so that we uh, reduce the amount of errors we can, we will um, create. Cool. All right. So the next thing we need some variables up here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new header up here. We'll call this um, engine properties like so. And what I want to do is I want to create a list of engines, but we actually don't have that class yet. So I am going to change this to um, drone properties. How about that? Or control properties. That's even better. All right. So let's start here. We're going to say uh, private uh, float. And we want to do the min max uh, pitch. All right. Well, we're going to initialize that to 30. And then we want another one. We'll say private uh, float uh, min max uh, roll. All right. So this is the, the rolling. And we'll initialize that to 30 as well. And then we want to do a private float uh, yaw power. Now, these are just names that I had come up with earlier. You're more than welcome to, you know, name them whatever you want. It'll, you'll get more of an idea of what you want to name them once we get through more of the, the physics and stuff. These are just the names I came up with. All right. So uh, we're also going to need another private variable. And this needs to be the inputs, right? So the IP drone inputs. And I'm just going to call this input for the variable name. All right. So what we should do, because we're requiring the component, we know we're going to have one there. So let's populate this variable with the actual component. All right. So we're going to say input is equal to get component. All right. And we want to look for the IP drone inputs like so. Cool. All right. So that basically will grab the instance of the drone inputs that will give us access to the properties that we made earlier on. All right. So then we could get the values using these properties. Okay, cool. So next thing that we need to do, I think that's actually pretty much it. Oh, you know what we need to do? We need to make sure these show up in the uh, editor or in the inspector. So we need to do a serialized field on all these guys. Oops. Let's copy those and paste those guys down like so. Very cool. And let's do something with, let's just prove physics in general. <laughs> How about that? So let's prove that, you know, we're actually inheriting from uh, this particular class. All right. And that our weight is actually working and assigning it properly to the mass. So how do we actually make something? How do we actually make an object to sit? or hover in the air, basically counteracting the force of gravity. Well, the equation for that would be mass times gravity, right? So if we take the current mass of our particular object and we multiply it by uh, the, the magnitude of gravity, right? In, the, in which case, inside of Unity, if we go to our project settings and we go to physics, it's set up for Earth gravity, right? So it's negative 9.81. Okay, but if we take the magnitude of that, it's going to be a positive number, so it'll be 9.81, all right? So if we do mass times gravity, or the magnitude of gravity, and multiply an up force, so vector 3 dot up, and we apply that as a force to our particular model, or our object, the object won't go anywhere because we're literally counteracting the force of gravity with the exact same amount of force, all right? So let's take a look at this, all right? So I'm going to do um, RV. And it looks like, where's my base rigid body over here? Aha. So let's make the rigid body protected, not private. There we go. 
I didn't have access to it because um, it was private, right? Even though we are inheriting from the base ridge body, because this variable is private, uh, it's localized to just the base ridge body class. Now that I made it protected, any class that inherits from base ridge body will now have access to it. So now I can say uh, RB. Yep, there we go. Dot uh, add force. All right, so we want to add a force. So in this case, let's just do vector three uh, dot up. All right, and we want to multiply that by our RB dot mass. So the mass times the gravity or the magnitude of the gravity, right? So we say uh, physics dot gravity dot magnitude like that. All right, so if everything's hooked up right and I just kind of position the drone anywhere in space that's not on the ground, the drone won't go anywhere, right? Because we are applying an equal and opposite force to the force of gravity, right? So we're counteracting gravity and this is how we make things hover, right? And this is just a basic example here, but this is a great way to just prove that all that stuff is working. So let's go back into Unity over here and go back to the inspector over here and let's drag and drop our drone controller onto our drone game object. And look at that, we have a rigid body. Um, we have our drag, our angular drag, so the start drag and the start angular drag are going to get their values from here. Okay, and our weight in pounds is one, so one pound. And now let's go and lift this up in the air a little bit and get a better shot here, better angle on this. I think that's cool. And then let's just hit play. And look at that. Even though on the rigid body we still have gravity turned on, right? We're not going anywhere because we're creating a force that is counteracting the force of gravity. Cool. All right, and we are on our way. So I'm going to close the lecture there and move on to the next.